Hello, and welcome to another session of Digital Surgical Pathology Slide Review, Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, and our program part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, part of the uh, collaboration between the Digital Pathology Association and Path Presenter. Our case today comes from the realm of uh, gestational uh, neoplasia. Uh, it's a question of uh, <clears throat> neoplastic or not. A 23-year-old woman who is uh, in her first pregnancy uh, begins to experience spotting at 13 weeks and is uh, concerned for either missed abortion or some other problem. Ultrasound shows uh, an empty gestational sac, but her HCG is still elevated. So uh, an evacuation procedure is performed, and you can see here uh, some curettings from that. We've got fragments of decidua, uh, a few villi here. Um, and as we uh, come in on these things, uh, we see that there's some large villi as well as smaller ones, uh, a bit of edema here, um, and maybe some uh, primordial vessels, but uh, we don't see uh, much in the way of uh, red cells, some fragmented stuff here. Um, and then looking at the trophoblast, of course, we've got uh, a degree of... Uh, uh, hyperplasia going on. Here's some rather exuberant uh, uh, trophoblast here. Um, looking down here at some of these other lesions, other uh, areas, we see some cisterns, some, maybe some scalloping here um, of these uh, villi and uh, quite a bit of uh, uh, trophoblastic proliferation if we look here. Uh, looking a little higher magnification, there uh, not a whole lot of atypia here, uh, fairly uh, normal uh, appearing trophoblast, but that can be deceptive. And here we see this uh, cistern formation, edematous uh, tissue um, here, and these uh, scalloped and uh, irregularly shapen uh, villi uh, in the tissue. So uh, is this something to be concerned about? Is this just uh, an abortus, an empty sac, a blighted ovum, uh, or is there something potentially more uh, ominous uh, brewing uh, in these materials? Uh, here we see a little bit more of the, uh, oh, I guess this is the, the uh, area stellar reaction here that we've talked about before. So here you see that uh, again right here in this uh, uh, field. So let's just talk a little bit about the clinical differential diagnosis. This is a very common problem. Um, and the histology, uh, as we'll see, is uh, challenging. If you look at uh, diagnostic concordance and uh, reliability, this is a diagnostic uh, category where the uh, CAPA statistics are poor, meaning that the concordance and agree agreement among pathologists, within pathologists, uh, can be quite variable. So the three major considerations that we're thinking about are blighted ovum or hydropic abortus, uh, a complete hydatidiform mole or a partial mole. Uh, of course, in general, this, the, uh, uh, in, in fully developed cases, there can be uh, differences. Um, but sometimes, especially in these early uh, first and early second trimester uh, contents, uh, they're less well developed. So villous edema can be seen in a hydropic abortus, uh, as well as a complete mole and a partial mole. So it's not specific. In general, partial mole tends to have more scalloped villi, um, and cisterns tend to be more common in molar pregnancy than in a blighted ovum. Um, the uh, apoptotic changes, if you find them, can be present in the stroma in a complete mole, but are not absolute. Um, fetal tissue, of course, uh, may be seen in a blighted ovum, uh, may also be present in a partial mole. Uh, the vascular uh, uh, findings, uh, usually because there's a fetus, there is some circulation. Uh, the vessels are functional in a partial mole as they might be uh, in a blighted ovum. Uh, and then, of course, from a staining standpoint, uh, P57 expression is absent in a complete mole, but present in either partial mole or blighted ovum. And then finally, uh, characteristic uh, cytogenetic abnormalities, 
uh, usually complete moles are diploid and uh, uh, diandric, meaning paternal only, whereas partial moles are usually triploid with two paternal and one maternal uh, set of uh, chromosomes. And of course, the complexities in uh, a blighted ovum can also be uh, somewhat variable uh, based on the etiology involved. So uh, why do we need to even bother differentiating these? Well, uh, obviously, it can influence surgery uh, and certainly uh, follow up uh, treatment with possible uh, chemotherapy agents, but also will involve uh, differences in follow up. The serial HCG monitoring may be more important with molar pregnancy. Uh, prolonged contraception, of course, can be important in that setting as well, whereas for a blighted ov ovum, uh, one would not uh, bother with these things. And then, of course, the recurrence or risk of progression towards some other gestational neoplasia, either invasive mole or choriocarcinoma, uh, can be uh, quite different, uh, 15 to 17 percent in uh, complete moles versus only 3 to 4 or 5 percent in uh, partial moles. And then recurrence risk uh, also is uh, more prominent in uh, complete moles, especially if they've had a second uh, episode. So this is uh, something that makes it different for the patient, for the management uh, to be considering. So how do, we, how do we approach this? Well, there is an algorithm that's recommended and I've sort of summarized it here. If we see hydropic villi and no obvious fetal tissue, a P57 stain will be very useful. Um, if P57 is not expressed, well, we can make the diagnosis of complete mole. Uh, on the other hand, if it's expressed, then we begin to look at a further, couple of other things. Is there trophoblastic hyperplasia or any degree of atypia? If not, well, probably this is a hydropic abortus. Some of these, we may still want to do, do cytogenetics, if, particularly if it's a recurrent one. Um, if we do see trophoblastic hyperplasia or atypia, scalloping in the villi and so forth, this is probably a partial mole and cytogenetics to document triploidy or other cytogenetic abnormalities, again, may be useful. Now, we can't always do this if we're only working with formal and fixed tissue, um, but in general, uh, this is uh, the algorithm. Now, you can do ploidy, obviously, by uh, flow cytometry from uh, 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 formal and fixed tissue, and so sometimes that is uh, the algorithm that will be followed. So let's look at the P57 from our particular case here. Uh, here's uh, the uh, section, and we see that, uh, you know, we can see expression. Now you will see expression in decidua, so that's not what we're concerned about. Uh, we see the, the expression here in the decidual tissue, but we want to look and see what's going on in the villi, what's going on in the trophoblastic tissue surrounding the villi. And as we see here, uh, there is no expression here. So uh, piece, pieces of decidua, implantation site, and so forth can have it, but pretty much uh, no expression. Now, rare cell, I don't think we're gonna call that uh, positive expression because this should be in most or many of the nuclei and we see it in none. So our particular case is absent expression and therefore a complete mole. Uh, here's another case just for comparison's sake, um, just to uh, give you another idea. Here's a nice edematous uh, cistern here centrally. Um, we see uh, peripheral uh, trophoblastic tissue here, uh, a few other villi over here, uh, not so edematous not much in the way of trophoblastic proliferation here in this case. So we might be thinking, well, this is just a blighted ova perhaps. Uh, then here's a case, or here's a, a villus with maybe a little bit of trophoblastic proliferation, a small cistern here, edema, but not much in the way of atypia and so forth. Uh, this case also uh, was found to have um, absent uh, P57 staining. So you can see there can be quite a bit of variability in the degree of trophoblastic proliferation uh, in the uh, pattern of uh, villus edema and cistern formation uh, in these lesions. 
Uh, here again, P57 stain uh, from uh, this case, we see expression in the decidua. And here we see, oh, excuse me, here, here we see a normal expression in the villus spaces uh, and in the uh, trophoblast. So this would qualify here as a uh, either hydropic abortus or as a partial mole. Um, and then uh, given that we're not seeing much in the way of trophoblastic proliferation, we might think, well, probably a, a hydropic abortus um, in this situation. Another example, um, again, edematous villi, very uh, prominent uh, villi, uh, edema, some central inclusion. Sometimes this is a marker for partial mole. A little bit of trophoblastic proliferation here, um, and we can see some degree of atypia of this uh, trophoblastic uh, tissue, the cytotrophoblast. Uh, so maybe this is a partial mole. Um, and we might think about that uh, possibility. Uh, here we see more of this uh, trophoblastic proliferation. Um, so let's just talk a little bit about uh, P57. Uh, this is also called CDKN1C. Um, and this is a very unique uh, protein. It's uh, imprinted from uh, the uh, chromosome 11. Um, and this is expressed predominantly from the maternal allele in most tissues. In other words, there is differential methylation of the maternal and paternal alleles, essentially inactivating the paternal alleles and non-expression of this uh, protein um, uh, by that allele. So in the situation where, as with a complete mole, we have two paternal alleles, um, it's not going to be expressed. And that's the basis for this uh, utility of this test uh, in our evaluation. So our final sign out today is a complete hydatidiform mole uh, based on the uh, P57 immunohistochemistry being absent. Um, and that uh, provides some appropriate follow-up for the patient and the clinician uh, to manage here going forward. So thanks for joining us for this case. If you like this, please subscribe uh, so you'll catch uh, future releases. Um, I'll post some additional slides in the slide deck and the link to those in the notes below so you can study the digital slides at your leisure. Uh, comment, uh, share your thoughts with me about uh, uh, how you would make the diagnosis um, or other thoughts you may have on this differential. So until next time, thanks for joining me.